In the previous tutorials, we set up a four-page website, and all of those pages were linked together. What I'd like to start looking at now is trying to add in some type of design elements into my pages. So for instance, if I take, for example, I want to change the background color of all the different pages on my website. In the old days, what we would have had to do was go into our HTML and use HTML attributes like BG color and so on, and fit those different things into the actual HTML pages. But that was really rife with problems, and I'll tell you the big reason why. If I wanted to change the background color of this piano page, for example, I would have had to go into the body tag and maybe put in an attribute, an old type of attribute called BG color. Then I would have had to go into every other page in the whole website and do exactly the same thing, go into the body tags of each of those pages and change the color. Now, if we decided later that we wanted to change the color again to a slightly different color, we would have to revisit all of those different attributes in all of those different pages. At the moment, I've only got a four-page website, but I could have a 400-page website, a 4,000-page website. It wouldn't matter. I would have to go into every single page and change things to do with the actual design of the page. Around uh, the late 90s, the W3C came up with a much better option, and I'm going to describe that now. Let's look at this diagram. Here I've got my four different HTML pages. And those four pages are joined to one another through the navigation links at the top of each page. Now, what the people who designed Cascading Style Sheet said was what would happen if instead of actually inserting the design parts of what the website should look like in each of the different HTML pages, it would be much better if we developed another type of file altogether, had one file where we held all of that design or formatting information and had each of the HTML pages point to that file. They call this type of file a cascading style sheet. And here I'm putting on the diagram all the different links to the file. Once we had this type of system implemented and we could ch make changes to the formatting or the design or the style of the particular web pages, uh, all of the different changes would cascade through the website because all the HTML pages had deferred or pointed the browser to the style sheet to refer to how the actual page should be formatted. And this had the big advantage in that now when we wanted to change the formatting of the whole website, we could just make the changes in one place and all of those changes would cascade like a waterfall throughout the whole website. To implement this idea, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to introduce you to how to put in these links at the top of each of the different HTML pages to point to the external style sheet. So let's do that first. Going back to my code, again, this is where the head section comes in. There are numerous things that the head section is used for, but one of them, as well as being the title, is actually putting this link in to actually link a HTML page to a style sheet. The tag that we use, along with its three attributes, is a little bit more complicated than usual. I'm just going to paste in the whole tag first of all, and then I'm going to talk about it later. First of all, the tag is just called link. Just like our anchor tags throughout the content of our HTML pages, we need to have a href attribute in this link tag to tell the browser what file I'm pointing to. The file in these sets of tutorials, I'll always call it style1.css. We can call it anything we want as long as it has that CSS extension at the end of it. But in these tutorials, I'm using the standard style one as my main style sheet for all of my different websites. So that's the href attribute. Then I move on and I move to a rel attribute. attribute. This is just telling uh, the browser what type of file this is. And then lastly, we need a type attribute as well. This is telling the browser what type of encoding the file is saved as. Now, if you can remember that link tag with its three attributes good and well, but more often than not, I usually just copy and paste it from someplace else, or if I'm using some type of uh, integrated development tool like Dreamweaver, uh, Dreamweaver will do this process for you very, very easily. The main points to note is, is that it has to be in the head section, inside the head element, and also, it needs to be on all of my different pages. So I've just put it into my index page there on this website. I'm just going to save that, and then I'm going to do the same for all of my other pages as well. Of course, when we will be starting out our design of our web pages, usually we'll focus on the first page first of all, get the design of that page right, 
and then use that as a template for my other pages. And obviously, if I had introduced this earlier on, we could have put this link tag with its attributes in the first page that we designed. And then by using that as a template to roll it out across the website, all of my pages then would automatically have this link tag in the head section. Now, I've just been presumptuous in calling this uh, style sheet style1.css. That is what the standard is that I use, but I haven't actually created that style1.css yet. I know that I'm going to create it in the next few minutes, but I've got the pointers in at this stage. These pointers here are the red arrows that are pointing to the actual style sheet, but as far as the actual style sheet itself is concerned, I haven't created that yet. But that's the next thing that I'm going to do. So back to my code and in this very same text editor that I'm using to edit my HTML files I'm going to use the same one to actually edit uh, or create my CSS so into the file menu create a new text document and here we can start creating our CSS formatting rules for the entire website now CSS has a different syntax or a different set of rules and how we write it as compared to the HTML with CSS, we break it into a selector to name a particular tag that we're interested in formatting. So I'm going to focus on the body tag to start off with because I want to change the background color of all of the different pages. So without using the angle brackets, I'm just going to name the body tag. Notice no angle brackets. Angle brackets are only in HTML pages. Then I open up a pair of parentheses or curly braces. And inside those curly braces, I put in the CSS declarations or CSS rules of formatting. I'm interested in changing the background color of these pages. The property that deals with the background color is just simply called background hyphen color. Remember, in the color we have American spelling. And then I can put in a color. So I'm going to start off with a very, very obvious color. I'm just going to start off with a hexadecimal red. At the end of any declaration, I use a semicolon, and that will allow me to go on to the next line and put in more declarations or more CSS rules in the same selector block. Notice the difference between the property that I'm focusing on and the value that I'm setting it to is the colon. To get the different types of properties and how they relate to different types of selectors and what values I can set them to, there are lots of different CSS references out on the web. I'd recommend the one from W3Schools. I find it very, very useful. But in the meantime, let's save this style sheet, making sure that I save it in the same folder with my HTML files. We don't have to do that, but just at the stage that we're at, I don't want to get into complicated file paths. So I'm just going to type in style1.css making sure that it's the same type of name that I've used in the link tags on the href attributes on all my HTML pages. So it is, I'm going to save that there. That saves in like that. In my text wrangler, my uh, text editor here, it actually color codes it because it realizes now that it's CSS that it's dealing with. And then I'm going to move back to my browser and refresh to check that the changes take effect. And here is the great thing about CSS. Because I've got the link tag with the href pointing to that CSS file on all of my pages, when I click on all of my pages, all of the changes take effect immediately. So it cascades through the whole website. I've got one point that I can change formatting rules that changes the whole website, and that's key. Going back to my code of my CSS, just talking about these hexadecimal color values, I'll talk about them in a different video tutorial. They're the preferred way of putting in colors in my CSS files. I could easily just type in a name of the most basic type of colors that will work as well. So if I save that and go back to my browser, it will work as well. There we go. But if I want to be specific about different hexadecimal colors, I can always open up a program like Photoshop, which you may or may not be familiar with, or go on to uh, the internet and find a color swatch type of tool. But in Photoshop, I can move around the uh, color palette here and pick out a particular color that I'm interested in. 
there it is. I can see the hexadecimal color value down here. Copy that, go back to my code and paste it in. Remember that putting a hash symbol in on a Mac is just uh, Alt and 3 is a shortcut. I should precede all hexadecimal colors with that hash symbol just so the browser knows that it's a hexadecimal color. Save that, go back to my browser and refresh. And again, it's across the whole site. Now, it's not just body color that we can uh, use to change the type or the formatting on my site. Going back to Text Wrangler again, I have lots of other different properties that I can set. And again, go on to the CSS reference on W3Schools to see uh, the different properties that you can use. But some examples. I'm going to restrict the width of my body to a particular set of pixels. So let's start off with maybe 600 pixels. Save that. Go back and check how to see how that works. Yes, I can see it's nicely tied it in. It's restricting the width of the entire body of my site to 600 pixels. That will do nicely. If I go back to my text wrangler again, let's try a few other properties. So for example, we could go margin left. Uh, set that to auto and all of these I can explain at a later time. And margin right, I will set that to auto as well. That basically means, sorry, margin right, set that to auto. That means that I'm allowing the margin left and right of the main body to act by itself autonomously uh, so that it can judge itself, keeping the width at 600 pixels in the middle of the page, uh, that it can readjust or adjust the margin left and right, margin right itself so that we get this kind of floating center type of effect in the middle of my pages. What happens if we want to try and change different elements and the formatting of different ele elements besides just the body element? Well, I can go back to my text wrangler. Uh, let's say I'm finished with the body selector for the moment. I just go onto a new line beneath the curly brace that's closing off the body selector and I put in another selector that I can say is the paragraph. I really want these rules to apply just to paragraph elements in my pages and I can start changing the way that those paragraphs look. So for example, if I wanted to use one of these other properties that I use for the body selector and just move it into the paragraph selector as well. Uh, I want to say that the actual background color of my paragraphs, I want to be slightly different. So let's say I want to set them to white. Let's save that, go back to my browser, let's refresh, and now we see that all of our paragraphs are white. Looking at my paragraphs as well, I can see that the text is very close to the edge of the paragraphs. I would like to add in a little bit of space around the edges of the paragraphs so it pushes in the text. Again, we'll be talking about this in a later tutorial. It's all to do with the CSS box model, but for the moment, I can say that all paragraphs should have maybe at least 10 pixels of padding. Save that, go back, just keep an eye on the difference between the text and the edge of the paragraph. I can see now they've got a nice little cozy padding uh, and it makes the, the paragraphs look a little bit better. I'm going to next focus on the images. And this is the last example I'll do in this tutorial. But the image at the moment, it's in line with the text, meaning that because this image is very, very tall, uh, the text is just getting pushed down here to the last line of the image and then it moves on to the rest of the paragraph. I've also got a few problems with very large images and I'd like to kind of standardize the images across my site. So going back into my style sheet, again, I'll open up another selector underneath the paragraph selector section, and I will put in a curly brace, and really the selector that I'm interested in is the image selector, meaning that I want all of these rules to focus in on image tags throughout my HTML pages and to change the formatting of them. So the first thing I can do is I can change the width or the height of all of my different um, images and change them to a particular setting. So let's try 200 pixels. So let's save that. Let's see what kind of effect that has. Uh, refresh. Let's make that one a little bit bigger. This one a little bit smaller. Yeah, I think rather than doing the height or the width, I might do the height instead. So height I might set to 200 pixels. Refresh that. Yes, keeps them a little bit more consistent. But they are all now of height of 200 pixels. And then lastly, I would like the text to wrap around these images. So the last type of property uh, 
that I'm going to put in here is the float option. And I'm going to just float all the images to the left of the text. So let's see what that looks like. Save, go back, refresh, and I can see all the text now floats in around the images. So you can see the power of style sheets. We make very large changes that move throughout the whole website very quickly. And also in terms of workflow between different members of a team that are working on a website, because we've all got all the formatting to do with the actual website in one particular file called a cascading style sheet, designers that are focused primarily on the way that the overall website looks can focus in on that file. Whereas content developers, people who are maybe writing articles for a newspaper website and so on, they can focus on just putting in the content into the different pages and they won't get the two mixed up. You won't have content developers inadvertently or mistakenly changing styling attributes in the middle of HTML pages. Uh, all the content developers can focus in on the HTML pages. All the designers can focus in on the style sheet. So there's a great separation there between content on one side and styling or design or formatting on the other. And that is an introduction to cascading style sheets and how to implement them across your HTML site.